If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this welcome back episode, we're back of Yay. Mind Pop. Missed Kinda, you bastards. I know. I, I know. I really missed you guys. So for the first 52 minutes, we do our introductory conversation. We talk about podcast advertising. You know, a lot of sponsors don't realize that podcasts are the place to advertise. Great conversion rate. Get with the program. We talk about new media and how it's destroying old media. Prime wardrobe. Adam recommends I go through them. I guess they'll help dress me. <laughs> uh, then we talk about Justin's Ireland and Scotland trip yay how much of it does he remember uh not a lot we talk about my san diego trip uh, and the drinking that i did in san diego and how i didn't get a hangover at all because i used organifi probiotics and four sigmatic activated charcoal i don't recommend it. i'm not saying this is a guarantee for everybody it worked really well for me didn't get a single hangover although i drank a lot uh four sigmatic is one of our sponsors if you go to four sigmatic.com forward slash mind pump and enter the code Mind Pump, you'll get a discount. And Organifi is one of our other sponsors. If you go to Organifi.com forward slash Mind Pump and enter the code Mind Pump, you get 20% off. Then Adam tells us about his beach retreat. Had a good time on the beach. We talked about Butcher Box and the benefits of grass-fed beef versus grain-fed beef. Apparently, there's a little controversy out there. Mm. Is grass-fed really better? Does it make a difference? Now, of course, we are sponsored by Butcher yes, Box, who uh, delivers grass-fed and grass-finished beef to your door for incredible prices. If you go to butcherbox.com forward slash mind pump, you'll get free bacon, two ribeyes, $10 off, and free shipping on your first order. Killer deal. Then I mentioned Mankind, the story of all of us. This is a great documentary on Prime. We talk about our good friend Lane Norton and Dom Diagostino, who are going to appear on the Joe Rogan podcast. We wish Ooh, them, get the popcorn out. Wish them luck. And then we talk about Elon Musk and his thoughts on artificial intelligence and why he smoked a joint on the Rogan uh, podcast. I love that guy. Great guy. Then we get into the questions. The first question was, what do we think about trainers and dietitians who are embracing the health at every size, body positivity movement? Uh, there's been a lot of controversy around, I guess Cosmo did a, a cover with uh, a, a very overweight model. There was a lot of pushback and debate over that, so we talk about that in the part of this episode. The next question was, do you lose your strength and muscle gains from creatine when you stop using it? A lot of people notice immediate gains when they start taking creatine, and if they stop taking creatine in a very short period of time, they notice those gains go away. Does that mean that they're temporary, or does creatine actually contribute to permanent muscle gain? The next question was, what do we mean when we say a gym has a good culture or vibe? And what should the gym managers and personal trainers do to create a good vibe or a good culture? Positive vibes, man. And finally, probably the most important question, we all guess each other's childhood TV crush. Yeah, it's <laughs> probably the most uh, my, favorite part. Who, my favorite part. Who was in love with Punky Brewster? <sighs> who loved Britney Spears? Who loved the girl from Who's the Boss? Mm. Uh, and who liked uh, Saved by the Bell? Yeah, and and who liked Zach from Saved by the Bell? Yeah. He's my favorite. <laughs> find, find out in this Actually, episode. I'm an AC Slater guy. Also, <clears throat> of course, this month September we launched a new Maps program, Maps Strong. It's a strongman inspired workout program that can be done in any gym. By the way, People so love it, man. You don't need special equipment: barbells, dumbbells, squat rack. A trap bar uh, would be preferable, but not necessary. Um, there's all kinds of different lifts. It's a different kind of workout. It's fun, very functional, but it is difficult. It is hard. It is a little advanced. And so people have asked us, like, should I start with Map Strong? And, you know, Map Strong was created not for the new lifter. Map Strong is created for somebody who's got some experience, who's been working out for a while, who wants something different and wants to shock their body into getting better results. For the rest of you, uh, we, you know, we designed our programs in any particular order uh, for a reason. It's because we believe the first ones we release are the places where people should start and they should progress through the programs and get their bodies to progress in the most efficient, effective way possible. And so what we did is we created something called a super bundle that combines our three core MAPS programs and our correctional uh, program, MAPS Prime, in an order that you should follow them. So what you should do is if you're just kind of getting started or you haven't been working out for a while and you want really good programming, you start with MAPS Anabolic, 
you train in that. Many of you should start in the pre-phase, so do pre-phase for three weeks, then you go to phase one, phase two, phase three. When you're done with MAPS Anabolic, you move to MAPS Performance. Now you're training more functionality, you're doing more multiplanar movements, you're doing more complex exercises, you're working on mobility. You do that program, improve your performance there. Then you move to MAPS Aesthetic, which is a very bodybuilding focused, body sculpting, volume intensive type of program. From there, then you can progress to some of our more advanced programs like MAP Split or MAP Strong. At the very least, I highly suggest you start with MAPS Anabolic and then move to MAP Strong. So you can find the super bundle that has the programs in the perfect order that you follow that you can do for basically an entire year. It's called the super bundle. You can find it at mapsfitnessproducts.com. And then if you're interested in MAP Strong, again, the new program that everybody's really talking about, it's really, really popular. Just go to mapsstrong.com and get yourself started. T-shirt time! And it's T-shirt time. Oh, yeah. Yippee! 17 <laughs> reviews, five shirts going out. 17, Adam. Mm-hmm. Almost legal. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrible. All righty then. Counting the days. <laughs> First winner. You're going to hell. <laughs> Nicholas won. ATL Brad, the real Silver Fox. Oh. Captain Quiqua. Sounds like a challenge, Sal. Bridles and barbells. All of you are winners. Send the name I just read to iTunes at mindpumpmedia.com. Send your shirt size, your shipping address, and we'll get that right out to you. You know how we've talked about uh, sharing eventually, like the building of the business, and like, because I, I just feel like we're, we're formulating that right now. And this is turning into quite the formula because we are at a very unique time in podcasting where not everybody is savvy to it as being one of the better mediums to advertise. So a lot of big companies, they're still on the Facebook game. Like, and it's, I mean, you, you, yeah. you guys remember that call we did with um, True Brain? Do you oh, remember that phone call? Yeah. We did a phone call with True Brain when we were up in Reno that one time. kind of punked us a little bit. Well, what he said, he was really polite about oh, it. Oh, yeah, but, I remember. But he said, he says, why would I spend four hundred dollars right. on you know or a thousand dollars on advertising with a podcast when i know that if i put a thousand dollars into facebook it will turn into fifteen hundred dollars guaranteed right it's predictable roi right so because of that a lot of these companies that taylor has to deal with and this is you know and i know i razz him a lot but the something that he's doing really really well and i'm very proud of him and i and i do i'm uh, in tune with all of it that he's doing is it, it takes a lot of conversation he sits down and writes a really long email to these companies to attract to even get them to look at us because hmm. when you Nate, when you talk about viore when you talk about uh the aer right now you talk about ease you talk about these guys none of these guys have ever done a podcast hmm. we're like the first we're the first a inter- lot of companies yeah a lot of these companies are just, and the, so it's tough because we want specific companies that we want to introduce to our audience hmm. we don't want to just fuck around with anybody who just wants to throw money at us we turn all those ones down yeah. we want to seek after these companies that we really like and brands we really like problem is not all of them are savvy to podcasting as a good medium. So it's still a new frontier. Yeah. yeah. So he yeah. has to do this kind of like, and we've talked about this a lot, where he goes like, Adam, how low will you let me go for a supply? I said, well, this is the way I look at it. If it's a brand that you really, really want us working with because you like it, it's it messes it messes meshes really well with our message. That was a tough. That was a wow. That's a, yeah. Right. You did it though. Try do it. it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> So, Tongue twisted. Yeah, man. it was right. So, if it's a brand that really meshes well with us, then I'm I'm all for you dropping dropping rates to get them involved with us yeah. because our we know our audience will respond well to it and they'll love it. So, well, I think that, I think uh, the cost for advertising, my personal opinion, the cost to advertise on podcasts on good podcasts because not all podcasts are, are created equal, obviously. <laughs> Yeah, is I think obviously it's, I think it's still way underpriced for a sponsor. I think if you're a sponsor, oh, one hundred percent, and people don't know how to read that right now. That's the challenge he's that's having. It. The challenge he's, he's having is everybody wants to look at, like Justin said the ROI. Like they want to see, okay, if we spend four hundred dollars, well, it doesn't necessarily work that way when you're like television, for example. Television doesn't work that way. You don't pay a million dollar commercial like when when Bud Light pays for a million dollar commercial on Super Bowl they don't see like a million dollar or 2 million dollars in sales the next day like that right. it's just it's brand awareness right. yeah. and you're paying partially for that sure their sales probably spike the next day too but it's it's but not- it's even different because the people don't realize the conversion power of a podcast i mean 
to give you an example, let's well, it's say you way more personal. Yeah, let's say you have a YouTube video that gets a million views, and you get a podcast that gets a hundred thousand downloads. You know which one's going to sell more for you? Download the, the podcast, podcast with with sure. with ten percent of the of the views or whatever, ten percent of the exposure. Because we're because your com- friends. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like you know us. Yeah. Like that, that's such a big difference. Like now, like the that that's what's so interesting to me because I, I go back and I'll watch like TV and like sitcoms and radio and I'll listen to these things and you're so disconnected with these people. Bro, it's cheaper. I don't know the I don't know this for sure, but I, I would bet that it's probably less expensive to run an ad on the Joe Rogan podcast than it would be to run an ad on ABC or NBC or one of the big networks. Oh, absolutely. Which one's going to get you way better return? Dude. The podcast. Way better. Well, and people are- And people don't skip over them like they do they're, with the- They're starting to figure that out. So we are seeing, I mean, dude, just, I mean, I know you guys have noticed the difference. When we first started the podcast, it was always this awkward moment I'd have when somebody asked what we do. Like, <laughs> what, what do you do? Like, yeah, I like, still have it all the time. Oh, man. Yeah. People, people, do, but now I, it's rare that I actually meet somebody who doesn't already listen to a podcast. Mm. Yeah. It's become that. It went from not knowing a lot of, like, at least 50% of the people that would ask me what I do for work didn't know what a podcast was. Well, they know it, but they still don't really understand how you make money with it. Yeah. Which now that's, is, that's another conversation. That but. is another conversation. But at least now, like, I- Yeah, they're like, aware. Yeah, like, uh, this whole last week where we were gone and stuff, I mean, we were we were out at, you know, walking stores and stuff like that, and we went to a couple, of, like, athletic stores, and people asked me, oh, what do you do? And- I said, oh, you know, do you listen to podcasts? It's like before I even respond what I do, I ask if they listen to podcasts. And nine times out of 10 now, someone goes, oh, yeah, yeah, no, I listen to so-and-so mm-hmm. or they, they have a podcast. Oh, you like that? Well, we just interviewed them. So, yeah. you know. The future of all media is going to be podcast, YouTube, uh, you know, all all new media, all internet-based you know, streaming media is going – it's already starting to dominate. It's already starting to take over. I'll tell you what. So, you know, uh, I, when I was on uh, – vacation all of us were obviously by the way missed the fuck out of you guys yeah so happy to see you guys we're back motherfuckers yeah, i feel very very happy to see you guys but on vacation late at night sometimes jessica and i were in bed and we would put on the tv and there wasn't any you know i didn't have netflix on it i didn't have anything hooked up to it it's literally old school tv Basic right cable yeah fucking garbage oh it's painful it's shit yeah. the commercials are shit the fucking sitcoms are garbage. Yeah. It's like the laugh tracks. But and I don't. All this shit. I don't realize how bad it was until I had disconnected from. Because I haven't had normal TV for a long time now. I only have on my TV. I have Netflix, uh, Hulu, you know, all the all the internet based stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, Prime, you know, Amazon Prime. So I haven't seen regular TV in a long time. Yeah. Watched it and I was like, whoa. Well, they give big it a difference. So check this out. This is how bad it's gotten, right? So we just got into our new place. What two months ago? And uh, I told Katrina, I said, when we try, because our our cable direct TV bill, like I'm, I'm is re- just ridiculous. It's three hundred dollars a month because I do all, all the channels mm-hmm. plus whatever. So we and I, I know we do not use that, and so we agreed that okay, when we move in this new place, let's see what it's like. Let's try not to have. First of all, we had not didn't have a TV for a while, sold everything, mm-hmm. and then I said, well, let's see if we can. Once we do feel like, oh man, I I miss watching a good show. Let's stream it and let's see how long we can live without this cable, right? So we get into the new place and uh, AT&T or Comcast, excuse me, uh, gave us a year free of cable. They just give it to you now. They're bleeding still. Oh, yeah. So it's like we're like, no, 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 we're streaming. We don't want any anything like, no, 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 here, it's free. Like I have HBO and like basic cable for free for the whole year. And I'm like, wow, that just shows you how desperate they are right now to get you kind of like hooked into just using it and be like, oh, fuck it. I'm already getting it for free and it's only went up to $20. I'll just keep it. Bro. Yeah. But nobody, it doesn't make sense anymore. You know what it is when I'm watching, one of the biggest things I noticed watching TV after I hadn't watched it for a while is the the per, the fake producedness of it, the, the fakeness of it. Oh my God. Like the makeup and the fakeness. And, yeah. the, and I was like, whoa, this is. I don't like this. I like the internet stuff because it seems more real. I don't know. It's Dude, it's hard to explain. It's it's interesting. We were I was just talking about that with Courtney because there's this show that's like um like they're, they're trying to find gold and and so they're uh, it's like Snake Island or something like that. Anyway, there's this whole thing that w- where they're like you know they're down in South America somewhere and they're trying to find this gold and um, it's so produced like 
the, all of a sudden you you see this this um like landslide happen all of a sudden and then like dude like you could literally tell that they staged the entire thing like they're adding drama where there's no drama and like literally somebody up there like blew up uh <laughs> some fucking rocks and and they made it seem like they didn't know it was coming even though they just jump out of the way right at the right minute and you know and they're trying to add all this tra- like they literally need to add shit where it doesn't even like it's not even there it's not real no and the it's produ- crazy and the cost of production for those shows is so expensive they're so screwed yeah they're so screwed it's all it's a matter of time it's a it's matter of time silly before. me you well, can see right through it now yep since we're on the on the tv and streaming kick right now t- so i saw this on last night man amazon let me tell you whew. These guys are taking over the world, bro. I know. I mean, they just reached the trillion. They're always the sleeper. They just reached the trillion dollar thing, mm-hmm. right? So that was like no big. That was real quick, right? Apple yeah, had yeah, it. Oh, here we are. Cute Apple. Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. We're right behind you. Yeah, here we come. So something that has I've watched grow a, a, an industry or a space that I've watched explode in the last like four or five years are these um, at home crates that you get sent to you that are like uh, they put together outfits. So it's, it would be, oh, yeah, like, it would be uh, great for like someone like Sal, right? Who can't dress himself. <laughs> right. So they send they send a crate to you. You of, make it sound like I'm like, what's this? <laughs> Put a sock on my like, head. Like, you know, stitch fix or trunk right. something. Yeah, yeah, I mean, there's there's a million of yeah. them now. And it was brilliant when they came out. But this just goes to show you like how disrupting a company like Amazon can be because they just rolled out their their prime amazon prime uh i forget what it's called fucking wardrobe prime wardrobe i think is what it's called maybe doug can google it are you looking it up so there's a trunk club there's one there's a so i just see this i see this poor company like you're done yeah you're done you know why because these guys they have their own brand or they're partnered with a brand amazon's like with everybody everybody's brand i know (laughs) It's, it's yeah. It's just like fuck you, dude. You, yeah. What I mean, someone come, compete somebody comes up with a brilliant idea like this. They're killing it for what? There it is, Prime Wardrobe, right? Damn, Fill your box, dude. try it on home, check out what you like, return whatever you don't want, whatever you keep. They just automatically charge. Fuck. You. So brilliant, right? That's so great. Wow. Now these have been around. They've been around for a while. I know. I have. Friends. Yeah, but then you got Amazon doing it, and they make it easy and better. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. They make it faster, faster. So it's now it's not taking four or five days to get to your house. It's coming the next day. It's brands that you now you have more options of what brands and things that you may want. Like. Yeah, yes, he's going shopping. Yeah. Dude. I'm yeah. doing that for sure. Smart, right? That's so brilliant. Well, Amazon watches what other companies do and the ones that kind of have a little bit of traction, then they're like, okay, cool, we'll do that. I imagine though, <laughs> they don't have to spend any money on our house. Yeah, you're that company that Doug just pulled up first. I just feel so sorry for them. Yeah. Like that you're so handcuffed, right? What do you do? Yeah. What do you do when Amazon decides they want to get into your space? They're like, well, it was cool. We I sure hope money. they stay the fuck away from fitness for a while. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're already taking over the supplements. I mean, I uh, yeah. Like any one of those supplement companies, once they got into the, the bodybuilder scene, dude, it was they're, it's over. They're already. still not fully. Com- I mean, they did supplements, but to look at their supplements, I don't think they're going to compete just yet. But when they do, yeah. it's done. Oh, it's, it's on. They're done. already. I mean, yeah. they, I mean, literally. Uh, you know, I don't know if it was IFBB or bodybuilding. Who was it that allowed the the fox in the hen house, dude? Yeah, yeah. But allowing them to stream the fucking. I body. think it was one of those. <laughs> Who the fuck came up with that? Who's the idiot that said yes to that? I think it's <laughs> it's one of those situations yeah. where you see the monster and yeah. you're like. Uh, maybe if we're friends with them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can't beat them. Join us. Yeah, maybe he won't eat me. Yeah, yeah. it's like when uh, it's like when Hitler was taking over Europe, and uh, you know, and, and England was like, "We'll just be cool," and America's like, "Yeah, we'll stay out of it." And then he just yeah. then they're like, "Oh shit!" And they're like, "Ah, we gotta do something." Yeah, we gotta do something. <laughs> well, that's the deal. I want to hear about you guys' trip, Justin. You were in Whew. you were in the motherland. Yeah, Home, little, homeland for a little while. Yeah, it's so crazy because I. Yeah, you know when you when you grow up, you kind of identify with with a certain uh, heritage. You know that uh, sure. like so I I really like heavily identified with with being Irish like forever because like that was something that, like my mom and uh, you know her side of the family, my dad on some level was like Irish, but. I found out I'm like not even Irish. What, what do you mean? What do you mean? <laughs> I'm like all Scottish, dude. How did you? What do you mean? How did you find that out? Uh, we went through a lot of the old records and um, some of the libraries and um, just just traced it all back to uh, a couple of the clans that all started out in Scotland, man. So I'm like almost eighty percent Scottish. Are you really? Yeah, that's that's awesome. Dude, I love the Scots. I got so like connected to Scotland, like in this trip, dude. It was crazy. Like we, 
I uh, just the 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 terrain, the 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 history of it, like everything about it, just the the uh, just their I don't know their attitude, their sarcasm, like the people. I fucking loved it, man. It was like so I don't know, dude. It's hard to explain. That's what I hear I, from I a lot of people. So connected to it. I hear a lot of people say that the people in Scotland or Ireland are just yeah. awesome. Well, both. I mean, I loved Ireland too, and I lo- and we spent some good time there. But like, yeah, it was just funny because. We went on a couple tours, which I know that that made made it better because we were able to like really get into the history behind a lot of uh, some of the um, you know the castles and the monuments and different things we visited. But um, and we saw a lot of the countryside, which was just epic. Um, but yeah, dude, I just felt so connected. It was it was crazy because um, just their um, you know their back history and like um, I think it's the Peck pecs uh, that were there initially um where the romans came in and, and they were like super like scared like they basically ran them out because <laughs> these crazy ass warriors from like over 700 plus years back uh w- would be like painted and blue and naked and fucking coming out like maniacs and, and fucking <laughs> scared everybody out of there dude and like dude braveheart is like all totally historically inaccurate you know, the, this guy was like going off about it and like the whole thing. Inaccurate or accurate? Inaccurate. inaccurate. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Like they didn't even have kilts, you know, in that time period, you know? So oh, that's like funny. 400 years off, you know? And then they add the blue paint and all that. And that's like not even a part of it. And so, and, uh, so and do, I, they, do they hate Braveheart over there or what? Yeah. Well, the, the, the people that are really like, you know, like historically, like, it's like, tied into to the country were like like pissed you know because they got it wrong yeah well they didn't even shoot any of it in scotland they shot it all in ireland oh, wow. like, like, oh what that's an asshole be- move <laughs> <laughs> you know like come on mel gibson you know <laughs> you fucking dick you know like, i just gotta throw it out there for my scottish people <laughs> you know? but, hey yeah. we got it we have to address uh the over-unders here so there was two, <laughs> there was two over-unders that were going on your trip here that you need to, to come clean here so okay. the, the first one was uh 23 guinnesses is the over-under Oh, uh, that's best. what you're talking about. And then, talking about pounds. And then six times of you getting fucked. So which are the two? Uh, <laughs> where what's uh, so? All right, what's the over under? Where, where you uh, I oh- definitely was over the six times getting fucked. Oh, you're over that. Yeah, that a, <laughs> that a kid. That's yeah. like every other day. He looks younger, doesn't was, he? Look at his face. You, you do, know, you, you know. do look spry. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, there was a couple days where it was like a few days. You know, like we we, we did like twice a day. Whoa. So, yeah, those were good days. But um, <laughs> th- as far as like the Guinnesses go, no, we, I, you know, I had, I had a fair share, but like when we went to the factory, like I had probably like, I probably had six pints <laughs> that day because I was just feeling it, man. Yeah. I was like, Ooh, I'm in the factory. And like, everybody like talks about how much better it is, like the closer you are to the factory and all this stuff. And like how it's like, like a milkshake, you know, it's so good. And- was it? Yeah, it was fucking great, but it, it really tasted the same. You know, <laughs> anywhere else, like that's all just a bunch of like myth and folk to get you to fucking go there. You know, like that's all advertising. You know, it, it'll taste the same. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but I'm just being honest. Yeah, yeah. You know, like they did have, and, and man, they, the way it's all set up, it, it, it's great. Like it, it, it has a lot of um, you know cool things to look at, and they actually they actually had like uh, some nitro coffee where they put Guinness in it or Bailey's. Oh, oh my God, that was really good. But uh, I'm not interested in how you fucking make your beer, dude. Like, it, like that got boring. Mm. Like, the, the actual, like... You just want to drink it. Yeah, I'm like, I don't care about that that history. Like, who gives a shit? You know, like, <laughs> I just give me the beer. Like, and the But the bar upstairs was, was amazing. The, the Gravity Bar, you could see the entire city of Dublin. Like, you could see it at right. the top, and it was... Oh, that's cool. What yeah. were the pubs like? Did you go to a lot of pubs? There's fucking pubs everywhere. <laughs> Oh my God, dude! Dublin is huge city, dude. I I didn't even realize how humongous it was. Like I, I just felt like, oh my God, like I don't even know where to go. Like the the thing about Scotland is there's a lot more landmarks and things where I could kind of navigate. Like especially in Edinburgh. Like like I gotta be honest, Edinburgh is my favorite city I've ever been to. So. Um, it like, cause you could actually like see, you know, in relation to where you are in the castle, the castle was like on this mountain, like in the middle of, of the city. So you could like see, we walked around the entire city, like a bunch of times we were easily could find our, what's, our way. Cool. What's transportation? Like, are you riding horses everywhere? With the <laughs> yeah. No, like <laughs> pigs. Yeah. Dude, there's no Uber. Uber That's what I'm saying, doesn't fucking it? exist like over there yet. Like so I, I know it does, but it's like, I was trying to look for it and like, I was only on Wi-Fi the, the whole time. And, um, so it was like it was like tricky 
but yeah, there's no there's no Uber. I forgot how fucking convenient that is. Like I'm like, oh my god, I could get anywhere. You know, like yeah, I'll get like we would have to get a taxi or like a bus. And so I did a few trains and and buses, but for the most part, we literally fucking walked and hiked everywhere. We did miles and miles every day. So it was just like, fuck it. We're going to This is why you're not fat. We thought the entire city. that was the other over under pad. <laughs> that's what I thought you were getting at with that. I was like, <laughs> no, I mean, uh, that's definitely a country that's on my list. I've always wanted to visit Scotland and Ireland, both. Oh, I, I only hear great I things. I highly recommend And it. we have a lot of fans yeah. in those in those oh. two countries, and they they love our show, and their sense of humor matches with ours pretty well. I think. Perfectly. And I yeah. actually, I, you know, I was communicating with a few, and, um, you know, I'm sorry I didn't get to meet up with, 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 a lot of people are reaching out. Um, I tried to make it happen. And I know like even in Ireland, I had it all set up. I was going to meet up, you know, with a couple of fans and it didn't, it didn't work out, but yeah, it was, it was great. I was getting all kinds of messages of people and we were all trying to like, you know, you know, connect and, and go to like a, Get, get a pint together, do something, like talk yeah. some shit. But It doesn't sound like you got a lot of, like drunk a lot. It sounds like you didn't drink nearly as much as I thought. I thought no. you smashed every day. No, it was, it was, cra- you know, what was weird about it was, it, it was constantly there. And so we would kind of start and then it was like, it would just like fizzle out, you know, like we would just like kind of start drinking and then we were just like, we would just get into uh, whatever we were doing as far as sightseeing or like, uh, talking and did you have a single best moment or day? Would you say like th- like this was like that was your favorite part or something that you did there? I mean, obviously, I know that getting all that sex had to have been okay. Uh, well, that that I know you, yeah, you that know. was like the icing. But um, <laughs> you know, like I think honestly, it was just being immersed. Um, like we did one day where we saw uh, I think we saw Edinburgh Castle, and then I think it was the day where we did that, and then we did a tour where we. We, I really just enjoyed our our tour guide, this guy Grant, who um, we we it was a van, so it wasn't like this big ass bus with all these like fat fucking annoying tourists from you know wherever else. You know, like I, I did not want to be on one of those things, dude. I was like, get me the fuck away from all these like tourist people. Um, so it was like a, a small. It was like maybe like eight eight of us in this van uh, with this guy, and he had the fucking greatest sense of humor. He was talking so much shit about. England, and like, oh, no. like all these different other countries, and just like every like talking just mad shit, and I just loved it because he was so sarcastic, and uh, it was no holds bar. Like you could ask him anything about like the country, the people, and like like all this kind of stuff, and so he just like w- he was going off the whole time and giving us stories. So awesome, dude! I learned so much shit. Uh, from that guy, like more than anything else, like that's good. Really, so, was it nice connecting time between you and your? It was because your. It was your. Which which anniversary was it? Ten. It was our ten year ten anniversary. Year, yeah. yeah. So that was. I mean, it was cool because there was a lot of exterior things that we were doing, but uh, really, we were just talking the whole time and just like energized. Like, every isn't that day. crazy? How much you need that, and you realize it after you do it, right? Yeah, it's so important. Well, especially I, today, right? I mean, we're just we're in a different time now, man. I mean, yeah. it, it wasn't like this ten years ago. So where, distracting and so busy. Oh, it's the phone thing, and and you know that's part of it, and kids and everything else. But um, you know, like just having like like airplane mode on the whole time was so liberating. Mm-hmm. It was so liberating. But I got to tell one story though. One like thing on that same day where we're going on all these sites. So we went to. Loch Lomond, which was this like really beautiful <laughs> lake that um, we hiked all the way around and like, you know, kind of like ended up at this place where we had a pint and like had, Courtney actually had some haggis and all that and she didn't know what it was. Uh-huh. <laughs> and I told her later and she was like, oh, but uh, she liked it. But um, we were walking on the trail and, uh, you know, we're talking, we're having this romantic kind of like connection and everything. And then we turned the corner and there's this lady like, literally like peeing on a tree what yeah a lady (laughs) a lady how did she pee on a tree i have no idea she was leaning into the tree like had her skirt all the way up and was like peeing on this tree what and there's this guy kind of like holding her like uh like her like hand on her shoulder and she's like squatting on this tree like peeing (laughs) and she sees us and was like oh god you know (laughs) like we, we all had this oh god moment like you saw us i saw you like peeing all this she puts her underwear back on like starts walking back i'm like where do i look you know because I, I gotta keep walking and, and we're like trying to get past and she like she's like oh i'm sorry you had to see that you know? <laughs> it just kept walking out and i'm like i was like okay i have so many questions you know like i was like talking to courtney like the whole way back i'm like okay so you couldn't walk 
you know, maybe like 40, 50 yards up, you know, out of the way, you know, you had to do it right on the trail, <laughs> you know, like you're peeing on a tree, you know, like there was instead just about, so many things. Right, instead of behind a tree maybe, right? Yeah, <laughs> like, well, like the decision process for you to do that, you know, and this is a public place, like there, it's... She told her boyfriend, she's like, dare me to pee on that tree? He's like, do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hurry up. Hurry you up, won't do it. You won't yeah. do it. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I will. Watch me. Yeah, watch me. <laughs> you know? wow. And it was like a full stream, you know? I was like, wow. I, I don't know. I just, I, I, I still, I'm still tripping on that. I think I probably drank the most then. I didn't think I would have, I would have beat you, but I, I, we went hard. I mean, I drank a lot of whiskey, dude. Oh, did you? Yeah. I, oh, yeah. I, oh, we, I got down on the whiskey. If we went hard, bro. We went yeah. hard the whole, because we were supposed to go to Maui. Supposed, yeah. You were supposed to go to Hawaii, but that got canceled. Yeah. What happened? You, so we were supposed to go to Maui. The day before we were going to leave, we were at my parents' house having dinner and, you know, I just check my phone to check the weather. It's like a hurricane. And man. it's fucking tropical storm warning. And they're saying it's going to be like 40, 50 mile per hour winds. It's going to rain the whole time. So, I mean, I don't mind a little bit of rain in Hawaii because it's warm. But this is 40, 50 mile per hour winds. Like, that would have sucked, right? No, been I've stuck. been there before like that. And there's nothing. I mean, I'm sorry. And, and Hawaii is warm and nice and beautiful even when it rains. But it's like when you're someone who's traveling there, like you're going there for the sun and the beach. And exactly. The, like, you don't want to be in a storm, you know, the whole no. time. So, yeah. so I called the company. They let me save the tickets. And so then we were like, what do we do? Like, where do we go now? Because I took the time off. And so we threw out some ideas in, in San Diego. We decided to go down to San Diego. So we did a little road trip, drove down there. And just fucking, dude! I gotta tell you guys, uh, activated charcoal is, and I gotta make sure I do this. Uh, this, you know, say this to the audience. I'm not advocating that anybody do this. It's my own personal experience, but for me, fucking magic, game changer, bro. We went. There was a day where Jessica and I went to Pacific Beach, yeah, and we got uh, the bird scooters so we could go all the way up and down uh-huh. the boardwalk. And we stopped at every bar and did. We played a game where we took a shot of tequila. So we do a shot of tequila, ride the scooter down, take a shot all day. We were fucking pissed drunk, and I'm sure you probably <laughs> are not so supposed awesome. to. Yeah, you're pretty probably sure. Not supposed I'm to pretty ride sure it's them. illegal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. but yeah, we you were a DUI for sure. We were destroyed, but I would take you know I would take a little bit of the activated charcoal every once in a while, and uh, it fucking worked. It's like I didn't get, we didn't get a hangover, and so what ends up happening because you don't. I get wonder a how much. I wonder if Organifi has been getting all kinds of like people reaching out to them. Like, yeah. What kind of commercials are you guys yeah. doing for yeah. us well, over there? No, <laughs> Organifi doesn't that. have activated charcoal. It was a. Uh, uh, it wasn't. Uh, oh, it was four sigmatic. Yeah, the, it was the four sigmatic. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, that's yeah. Oh, that's yeah. Yeah. oh, that's yeah. Yeah. in the lemonade one. Yeah. 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 That's what you're. Are you taking it like that? Or are you? Take- so I took that, or I'll take capsules because capsules I can take with me, and capsules you just buy generic. Oh, I always thought you were giving. Oh, you know you're giving us the probiotic with it. That's probiotic. That's the Organifi, Organifi probiotic is, is another uh, another little hack. Because really, I think it's about keeping your gut healthy and, and make, make sh- making sure these to- you don't build up all these toxins. To be honest with you, I don't know how it really works, but I do know it works. The problem with it is because I didn't get a hangover, we just got smashed every day. Like wow. every single day we would go out and we'd drink in the morning. We'd have mimosas. And then we'd <laughs> fucking do something else. And then we'd end up at a bar yeah. and we'd get one drink, two drink, three drinks. And then we'd hang out a little bit and they'd be like, let's do some shots. We'd do some shots. It was like we were college kids partying. That's, that's awesome. All day long. So we, that was our, that where did, was basically Where, where did trip. you stay? What kind of, what kind of place did you so, stay? So Jessica didn't want me to tell anybody because it's such a <laughs> nice it's a, such a cool little area, but I guess I have to say because you asked me. So there's this, there's this island off of the coast of San Diego called Paradise Point. Have you guys heard of this? Mm-mm. It's a small little island, super easy to get to, and it's a resort, and it's right there, and it's right next to the beach and everything else. It's like a ten minute drive to Little Italy or La Jolla, which we went to all, both those places. So it was, it's cool. Wait, how's it a drive to La Jolla if it's on an island? So it's an island, but it's super close. So literally, the bridge is like oh, so okay, you got it. It's a tiny bridge, and got then it. it's it's a small it's this small island, and it's just it's absolutely gorgeous. But San Diego is such a gorgeous city. I know. I like I would San live Diego. there in a second. Yeah. Have you guys been to Little Italy before? No, I haven't been there. Oh, uh-uh. it's so just like the Gaslight District or the gas lamp yeah, District. Gas is lamp, gore- every, yeah. I mean, everything down there is just—it's so nice and so makes me hate living up here because San Jose is so expensive. Yeah, and there's not really. I much just to do saw up here. that article. San Jose is the worst place to live, or the uh, least—it's the least affordable place to live. Yeah, the least affordable place to live. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so you get awesome. the least for your money here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's pretty lame. Uh, yeah, it's pretty bad. How, how was your Adam? You took a little bit. You didn't do a long trip, right? You did yeah. some short ones. Well, no, we went. Uh, I mean Wednesday till uh, Saturday, so we we took up we headed up Wednesday. We worked Wednesday, took off 
uh, that afternoon up to Monterey, Carmel area. And this is just one of my favorite places uh, that I like to go to, the sanctuary up there. Um, just a really, really cool spot. We we get a, a suite on the on the beach, so literally like you walk out of our room and you're in the sand, right? And it's uh, also a place where I could take the boys. So that's, you know, for us, that's really cool because then we don't have to have somebody watch them and that's not a headache. And they absolutely, they just love it out there. It's the, being right there that close to the ocean, it's a really peaceful place. Not a lot of like, you know, we don't do a lot of partying and shit as far as going out to the bars or clubs. It's definitely... It, it, a couple times I looked at Katrina and I'm like, are we getting old? Like, is this... Is this <laughs> dude, you know, I had the same comment because, like, Courtney, like, dude, like, she just didn't want to go out. You know, I was, like, trying to pull her out to go to, like, these clubs. Did not want to go out. And I'm like, I get it, you know, like, but, but like, I feel like, we're fucking old. Yeah. Like, we have to go out because otherwise, you know, like, we're giving in. That's, uh, you know, the things that we were in. I mean, we had, like, a we had this cool, you know, the way they set it up is dope, right? So it's, I'm facing the ocean. The, the sunsets are amazing. And I and I feel bad for people that are, are I don't really feel bad because this is part of our trip. But I mean, you know, I don't I don't do so well at taking Instagram photos and doing a lot of that or show sharing all that stuff that often because I'm in the moment of experiencing. It, but it's just epic. Like we're mm. sitting in this in our room and we have this balcony that's facing the ocean and are on the sand and the boys are chilling and her and I would you know pop a bottle of champagne or wine and we'd sit there and we just hang out and drink some wine maybe smoke some weed and we're just watching the sunset and talking and you know i i disconnected from all my electronics i didn't have the laptop out i didn't really use my phone uh much at all i think i, t- I might have snapped a few pictures when we first got there kind of regretted some of that because i told katrina there were so many beautiful moments that we were there but we were so into each other and enjoying that that we really didn't get a chance to take very many pictures. I just it was very relaxing for us and it was a good time. It was nice to do that during the launch too. So, you know, we're in the middle. We just finished our our strong launch and that program release. And so, you know, I, I there was a, a little bit of hesitancy for me at first to going because I get nervous about leaving the business sure, completely right. when something like that's going on. But I mean, it was pretty exciting to see where we've come now, where we have enough people that uh, work for the work for the business that the even though the four of us were all in different locations and, and vacationing that the business was still operating and running very smoothly so that was really really cool and I, I I have to say that I think that this trip felt like that the most out of everything everything that we've done so far I mean we're we're moving into what coming up on year four mm-hmm. of being into this business and I have to say that that was the most relaxing one and I know that's part of the reason that wasn't just the fact that I'm in this amazing location with my partner and and my boys and stuff like that being able to do that that's all awesome but the fact that what what we've built now has in a place where it can continue to run and we can be in place like that and it doesn't feel stressful Mm -hmm. man that really just was like the icing on the cake for me i I really do think too helped a lot and i do think it's important that you you know you take that time with your with your partner especially if you have a normal such a especially like for someone like justin right with with kids and all that and i know you and your wife's schedule can be alternating so it's like passing ships in the night yeah you know doing stuff like that is super important and then because our our business is also creative right because we podcast and we talk about topics and stuff like that take like i was so excited to come back to work dude and just get on the mics with you guys and insanely energetic dude i'm I'm a little bit because i was 10 hours ahead over there so coming back was like a real big transition (laughs) but like so i'm I'm waking up like really early in the morning now (laughs) right so i was up like yesterday at like four or five in the morning and then today again at like five and i'm just like just buzzing you know (laughs) i'm like i gotta do something with this energy (laughs) you know like i'm so ready yeah it was so good it was like a total battery reset i felt the same way we got back saturday and then saturday of course you unpack and do laundry and do that stuff and Mm. you know and, and here's the thing on our vacation and, and you guys are talking about getting old same here like we did party but we didn't go to bed later than like 10 30 so it's not like <laughs> yeah. it's not like we par- we partied during the day we'd wake up at six oh, Who the day, fuck does day this, par- that's exactly what we did yeah. i think that's it was just all during the day it we was drank. all during the about we didn't 10, drink at night yeah 10 or 10 30 we're in yeah. bed and we're just we're out go yeah. to sleep well there's something i think i think with age gets the it, it's some of this wisdom bro. of course you, you, you realize like 
and we talk about this on the show all the time yeah, about the, young the importance of sleep, like and what yeah. sleep does, like good good sleep for you. I mean, it made the whole trip great. If you got a good night's rest, I was good every day. Exactly. I, we were able to drink almost every day, and I was fine and it, because we always, like you guys, we did it early in the day. I'm uh, I'm done doing it by eight o'clock. We have a nice good dinner afterwards, mm-hmm. and then we go to bed, and then wake up. It's for- such a good point yeah. because if you're gonna drink and you're gonna party and stress your body, and you throw lack of sleep on top of that, yeah. dead, yeah. you're fucked. If you if you do that and you sleep. It's kind of a hack. You can party more. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I don't have to take well, a day then, off. And then you add in the charcoal and the probiotic, dude. I'm telling it's you, advice, we, we, it's, it's uh, mandatory Bros, for us. Speaking yeah. of sponsors, did you see the, the, the response we've gotten with ButcherBox? Yeah. Because, oh, oh dude. I love our, it. I, I'm so glad people are jumping on the train because, like I, like I said, dude, it literally like kept me going. I just having like all that meat like at my house. I came home so to good. I came home to mine on Saturday, which is so awesome because you know yesterday yesterday that Sundays is when we prep for like the week, and so I arrived back on Saturday. And my box is already waiting for me on on my on front step, and then we barbecued up and. But the, the it's got to be one of our most successful sponsors with the amount of people from our audience who are going over because we get those statistics. Yeah. And it's growing. And it, that means to me that the people who who did it the first time are telling other people and it's just exploding. So you it's have very to, successful. You have to share a little bit, you know, uh, on the, I wouldn't say negative side, but I, I saw that uh, Dr. Molly made a, a kind of a comment about uh, us and Max Lugavir talking about butcher box and then. Well, the benefit of grass fed versus fed, excuse me, versus grain fed. Yeah. And well, she's, she says that she hasn't seen. She's been wrong a lot lately. That what's, much. What's, what, what, what's with this kind of like a Lane Norton kind of a stance. Well, you know what it is? Here's the deal. Cause she's pretty open. She's typically pretty open minded, but she is a, a doctor. And so I think sometimes where they, they have to see the clear evidence right. first. They get hung up on the literature. You that, have to see clear, right clear evidence first. Yeah. Even though some of the evidence and suggests- since, mo- since most of the studies are being done by, <laughs> paid by the people. That, well, <laughs> here's the thing. Here's the thing with food, hmm. and this is the interesting thing. I'll, I'll use- artif- going to take a little time. For I'll use thing. artificial sweeteners as an example. So let's talk about right. sucralose, for example. One of the most popular artificial sweeteners, it's used to sweeten pretty much every sugar-free- muscle building or fat burning supplement you can find except for the organic ones like Organifi or whatever. But most of them are, are, are sweetened with sucralose. If we go back five or six or seven years, not that long ago, not even a decade ago, so five or six years, all the literature, all the hard evidence shows that sucralose has no effect on the body. So they, they and, and now why? Why did they show that? Because they didn't know to test for particular things. They never tested the effect on the microbiome. They didn't know to do that. So According to them, the well, evidence even, shows and there's no effect. If, and even if yeah. they did, the people that are paying the money to get the research done are people that probably have that are selling. Sure. It. So a lot of the information is, or even if they did test for that and they saw that it might not have been, you're not putting that out there. Like yeah. if you're protein They're powder or your pick tr- whatever data, they yeah. Can so anyway. and I, why yeah. would that be Same any? Di- why would that be any dif- different than the? The 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 uh, you know beef industry like why would that be different right now because a massive industry right so it's not just the be- it's not just the beef industry it's also the grain industry because mm-hmm. a large a, a significant portion of the money that the grain industry makes is in feeding cattle and pigs and stuff like that so if you if you produce corn and wheat and all these other you know grains you are also selling a lot of that to the cattle industry and so. You have the grain industry and the beef industry working together to maintain the status quo, which is grass, excuse me, grain fed beef. And and I mean that's speculation, but look, it's it's not a hard one to make and it's not it's not a stretch. We've seen this I don't know how many times in different well, industries. So then what is true then that we do know? Because don't we know that it changes changes the fatty acid profile? So there's some evidence to show that the fatty acid profile changes, that the nutrient profile changes. But that's what we know to test for. There are other things that we don't know necessarily what to test for. And here's what I always go back to. What is the natural food of cattle, right? Grass. It's not It's yeah. not grain. It's, yeah. it's, it's grass. And right. so- if humans evolved eating animals, which we did, we evolved eating animals that evolved to eat particular types of food. And if we change anything in that chain, the odds are it's not going to be ideal based off of these, these thousands and thousands of years of evolution. Now, that's a, a, that's a speculation, but so far it's proven to be pretty accurate with most things. You know what I'm saying? Like if you take a human and you feed them in a way that, you know, that we 
have a pretty good idea that we evolved to eat, then they're probably going to be healthier. It's funny. I was just watching another great documentary series I recommend to everybody on Amazon Prime. It's called uh, it's called Man or Mankind. I think it's Man or Mankind, the story of all of us, and it starts from the beginning of humans until you know we're you know present t- time and technology and shows the evolution. Well, I don't know if you guys knew this, but in the early earliest days, the skeletons that we have of the early early hunter gatherers in Africa. This is thousands and thousands of more than 10,000 years ago. They were on average two inches taller than the average American is today. Back then. Wow. Now, now why? Well, the fucking diet, probably. Mm-hmm. They didn't eat. You know, what they ate was that hunter gatherer diet and it made them healthier and they had better teeth. They studied their teeth. They had better. Now, a lot of people died because of, you know, disease or injury. But if they didn't get disease or injury, they lived a, a decent life and they, again, they were taller and stronger. Then when the agricultural revolution, it's called mankind, really, really good. Then they had the agricultural revolution, which is about 10,000 years ago, where we discovered that if we plant seeds, we can create plants. And now we, can, we, don't have to, we don't have to roam. We can stay in one area. But now our diet is severely limited. The average height of humans significantly dropped. And you see uh, bone density went down. Teeth got worse. People got shorter. And now people after the agricultural revolution. After the agricultural revolution. Oh, that's revolution. interesting. Yeah. So like when Christopher Columbus and when, you know, when all these explorers came to the, you know, quote unquote new world, they noticed that the that the people here were taller. And so a lot of that has to do with diet. And so I'm using that example yeah. because I think that applies to everything. So if you eat an animal and that animal is not eating what it's evolved to eat, uh, then you're probably not ideal. And so grass-fed, and there's some evidence to suggest that this is actually the case, and most of the health and wellness experts that have that are, have a lot of integrity will tell you the quality of your food matters, and when they refer to quality, they mean organic and you know, grass-fed, or if it's fish, you know, it's wild and, and all that stuff. So there, I think there is a, a, a big difference. I personally can feel and tell the difference when I eat only grass-fed Versus when I eat only grain fed, and I feel it in, in terms of inflammation. It's mainly how. What do you think's gonna happen when? So you guys know that uh, Lane's going on Joe, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, I saw it's, that. It's I'm coming like, up this. I think in him a week. and Dom D'Agostino. Yeah. Is, Is Dom, Dom gonna be there too? Yeah. Uh, oh, I didn't like, know. Like they're they're. Uh, I don't know if they're like having kind of a. Um, <clears throat> I think I think Joe just wants a really smart. He just wants somebody to kind of back him up or, or like have a, a, a countering opinion. Right. I think yeah. that's I think that's the reason why he has Dom coming. Although I don't. It think can go. It can Dom go. A lot of, well, they're friends yeah. too, so that I think that's why. Like it, you know, it's probably going to work out fine. You know, with with Lane and, and having Dom Diaz, you know, because like they're already like. You we'll know. see, dude. If Joe starts hammering on sugar and well, Lane speaks up against that, then there'll be a nice little argument. Yeah. No. I, yeah. Rogan is always anti-sugar. Always. Yeah. Yeah, you know it's going to be interesting to, to to see it and hear it because I know we all know Lane's stance for sure, and I know Joe's stance. It'll be interesting to see, and I know Lane has been wanting to go in on him for a minute, so he's been he's been I know he's, he's been, been hounding. To get oh, on he's that been show. poking Joe for a long time, and ever since that one guy, what was his name? Um, that was oh that for, he was that a, uh, what's he's his a name? journalist. Yeah, what's the name? Tib- Tib- Gary Taubes. Gary Taubes. Gary go. Taubes. Yeah. So like, yeah, Lane's been salivating to get on there and like debunk everything he's he's said, you know, about sugar. He better be careful, stuff. dude. Joe's a fucking hell of an interviewer. He's dude. He, you don't Joe's fuck- very intelligent. Like people like I mean, and he puts out there a lot of times like, oh, I'm just you know this ape or what. I don't really understand. You know what you guys talk like. He understands. You know, and it's like he does his research and he he really like brings people on that have. Uh, relevance right now and he does his research of like you know trending topics well, and well people think that just because they're going to be on a massive show like like Joe Rogan's show that that's going to uh, dramatically propel their exposure and career in a positive way mm. that's only true if you do a good job if you do a good job if you, you present a, yourself well you do a bad job right. if you get on the Rogan podcast and you do a shitty job it could do the opposite it yeah. could actually crush you right so you have to get on there and be able to do a very good job and and come across here's a deal my advice to Lane and in, 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 yeah. you know soften up and I think Lane will do this because Lane's a smart guy is you have to be likable. So yes. you can't just be right. Yes. You can be right and be not likable and you'll and you'll get nothing out of the, the This is a explosion. hard lesson for a lot of these guys who yeah. are very polar, you know, and they they're very hard stance, you know, with with their whatever, you know, their argument is and what they're coming in with. And so this is I think it's well, might this be a humbling is, this, experience. Are, this is where I think Joe's a fucking ninja, bro. He be, this is where Lane better tread lightly because I'm I think I know Joe well enough to know that he's going to be the type of person who will poke 
at at Lane's mm. insecurities and stuff that he sees or he knows about yeah. if Lane tries to come too hard. So right. Lane better better come with it right, or right. I know I think Joe will lead him in a way that'll make him look really bad. So it's like, dude, it's not about just being right, dude. Yeah. <laughs> getting on getting on this podcast and just being the be guy likeable. with Yeah, exactly. The being the guy with more science and more information doesn't necessarily mm. mean it's gonna be a great But it could go it. great too. It could go absolutely great. It could. So we'll see yeah. we'll see what happens. You know what was great was Elon Musk. Oh my oh, God. That dude. was my favorite like so, episode he's done yet can we talk a little bit about that because i i, I watched it finally the other day and he's the such an eccentric guy i fucking love that guy. one of the things that i was really intrigued by him talking about was referring to us as cyborgs already yeah yeah and how right you know isn't that right on though it is true because you could automatically reference anything yeah, yeah the only you're di- already smarter the difference is you just can't connect to it fast enough it's very yeah. limited because yeah. it's through your fingers and typing that's the only difference mm-hmm. and so and thinking about that like when you think about all these possibilities of ai and which direction are we going to destroy ourselves or is that like what's the most likely how we will use this tool and it's kind of exciting to think that we may be able to in the future implement this you know, super fast Google type system connected to our brain Mm -hmm. that allows you to be able to access Mm -hmm. correct information because you'll be able to, it'll be aggregated for you already. And so think about all the stupid conversations and arguments and debates that become eliminated because you become hyper aware because now if you don't know from your own personal experience, you can draw right from this, these analytics really Mm -hmm. quick. And it's like arguments solved. Like, Bro, we, we you know all we have to do is search it really quick. It's going to be an interesting, it's gonna be very interesting. Yeah. It's going to be an interesting problem because it'll either polarize people even more, or people will become so empathetic to each other because we'll understand each other better. Yeah. So it can go either direction. That's how I feel. I feel yeah, it'll be you, you actually be that. positive. I think I think that people. I do too because I think the smarter we become, the more empathetic we become. I think I think the people that more are informed. Yeah, the more informed you are and educated you are, I think the more likely you are to be empathetic well, to other people. Historic history would would say that you're right. So far, historic the more connected we've become, the easier we can communicate with each other, the more we progress in terms of, you know, being peaceful, helping each other, trade with each other. The world becomes smaller. So, you know, if you go back, you know, 5,000 years, you know, the, the neighboring towns would hate each other. And then the world got a little smaller. And now it's like, okay, we're all in the same state. So we're all friends, but we don't like the other state. And then it mm-hmm. became countries and then it became regions. And at some point it's just going to be the world, you know, where humans are just going to connect with each other so quickly yeah. that it's not going to be this races or regions and stuff like that. That's what I think too. But one thing that Elon said that, and he brought up a great point because he's always feared AI and I've always not yeah. feared AI, but a point he made was really good is that he's afraid humans will use AI to fight each other. Well, and, let's, and that's true. Well, let's be honest. Yeah. It's more likely to go there first than it is an arms yeah. race. You see China like really like pressing hard to to get to there first and and i don't i don't know if like everybody else is realizing you know the importance of that and like how significant that is if whoever gets there first like and has the ability to program and tap into you know that ai you know that's going to be a significant advantage oh it'll be i mean if you have the ability think about the ultimate power that that would provide to to people you know if it gets in the wrong hands, well, of and, course you could start you could start wars and not risk yourself. You know what I'm saying? Or you just and, shut them down, right? Yeah. You could literally just shut people down and be like, "Do what I say," because I got you know I have all the power, right? You know, I don't know. It's kind of scary, but anyway, that interview was awesome. He's yeah, an eccentric it was person. Fire. I fucking love him, and I love how everybody freaked out that he smoked a joint. I love that. Yeah. Nobody. Oh, what the fuck? He's like, drinking whiskey on. the whole time. Nobody yeah. cares. Yeah. He takes one hit off of a joint. I don't even think he inhaled. Everybody loses he didn't even their mind. He get high. He was just like just being cool and like hanging out. Like now, now I've heard rumors that he did that strategically to lower the price of the stock to buy it back. Yeah, that's what I. That's that would be brilliant. That is brilliant. I, I see, but I, I like him even more if that's the case. I, yeah, I, which is ironic because I know he's in a case. He just he just won his case, right? So he just won a case uh, recently from uh, SEC trying to get him for manipulating yeah. the stock. Which I think you can get in trouble again for doing uh, something like that. I, see. I don't know if that's a, a straight a good strategy or not, though. Like to to do that, I don't know if that's. It's probably I've, I've he, heard mixed. I think he's probably just an eccentric guy. Uh, yeah, I don't think that. Was I the think case. he's not even thinking that. He yeah, just, he just, just went for it. He just went for it yeah. and did it. And it's I, just like he dug a hole. He's like, "Fuck it, you know, I'm just gonna dig a hole." Like I just love the mentality of it. Like I'm not asking, you know, for the rules and regulations and you know, city ordinance and whatever. Like it's on my property. I'm gonna dig. a 
fucking hole and then just keep going. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know? Like, I, I did have some empathy for him with like the stuff that he's battling with all the lawsuits of people suing him for Tesla's breaking down. It's like the guy's on a mission. But he's winning those. I know, I know. He's on a mission to to make things safer and yeah. better for people, meanwhile getting and sued. Statistically, it's already proven like more safe Bro, with all these he's, He's like a TV or movie genius. Like, right. like he's like the stereotype of a movie genius, where he's kind of eccentric, really wants to help the world, kind of weird, mm -hmm. you know, tormented by the fact that he's so brilliant. Because he actually alluded many times to he's like Tony Stark, the fact that he was he he's he kind of tormented by it. Like he's like his mind doesn't shut down; it doesn't want to shut down. Mm -hmm. But he, it's it's he's a lore. It's an alluring character that he is, and a, a fucking definitely the number one person I would like to meet. Who's alive today in the world? Yeah, for sure, number oh, yeah. one person yeah, for sure. He's very. Interesting. I feel like I could sit in a room with him and just, just fucking be enamored by the dude. He's so he draws me in because he's such a smart dude, and he's so, he's so he just, just who he differently is differently than everybody else. Yeah, well, he, fucking great. How about I mean, how about just totally like debunking the, the even the possibility of us having flying cars? Like because yes. that for the longest time I thought like that was where we we're going to go. Like we're you know no, it makes no, perfect after Back to the Future is like this yeah. makes sense. We're going to back to the, where we're going to be flying in cars in the next 20, 30 years, and then now going like oh shit, you're so right. Like uh, that would be noisy never, as fuck. Yeah, it would <laughs> never work. Yeah. It would never work because of that. I'm like and everybody oh. crash into each other and crash in your house. Yeah. Like it's just all <laughs> kinds of it's so problematic. <laughs> But yeah. then, it, but then this, this, the you know, the uh, to solve this is to do these tunnels. Mm -hmm. Like I didn't even think that way either. Like wow, you know, being able to do that would make would get rid of all the problems. Yeah, you can go way down. You know what? Maybe I was actually listening to it. How funny is this? We're driving back and we're in a little bit of traffic, and I'm listening to Elon Musk talk about this exact topic, and I'm going like, wow, we're, are we going to look back in like 20 years and go like? Like how fucking Stone Age we were having to sit in traffic. Like, you believe you sat in traffic yeah. for a while? Like, that's just ridiculous. That was so stupid of us that we <laughs> we decided to make these two dimensional roads in a three dimensional world, yeah. and that we all were forced on this one little yeah. path when we could have went down, you know, or you know, built that way. And we can increase our speed like exponentially, you right? Know? Just like uh, putting it on the tube. That's because the roads are built by the state. That's why. If the if the roads were if they were private and people are gonna pissed off at me. If they were private and companies <laughs> competed. Yeah. For your money to drive on the roads, I fucking guaranteed you traffic I thought some, would have been solved by now. Now, some roads are private. I'm yeah, but the regulations on them is so limited that it doesn't... If it was legit, like, you could do whatever you wanted and people could just pay to go on your road or whatever, you would definitely see competition. You would see people... You would see these businesses compete, and one of the main ways they compete is, come take our roads, there's no traffic. And people would be like, no problem. That would be the first... Think about it this way. What's the number one market demand for roads? Think about that getting to where you want to get as fast as possible. Mm -hmm. So they have to solve that because they have to compete with each other. But because the roads are, are owned and controlled by the state, there's no competition. So traffic is fucking traffic. You just got to deal with it. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So Total stupid. waste. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. This Quaz brought to you by Organifi. For those days you fall short on getting your organic veggies or whole food nutrition, Organifi fills the gap with laboratory tested certified organic superfoods to help give your health and performance the added edge. Try Organifi totally risk free for 60 days by going to Organifi.com. That's O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I.com. And use the coupon code MINDPUMP for 20% off at checkout. First question is from Barbells and Boxing Gloves. What are your thoughts on trainers and dietitians who are embracing the health at every size positivity movement and your thoughts on the movement in general? Is it really possible to have health at every size? Mm. No, I don't think at every size. But you, you saw that recent uh, Cosmopolitan. Did anyone read it? I didn't read no. it. I just saw the cover. God and damn it. What it one of us should have read it. We I, yeah. I, you know what? I just paid no attention to because that's so silly. Yeah. I didn't, but I should have read it just so we could talk a little bit, a uh, little bit deeper into it. But this has been going on for a while now. Yeah, uh, I think I think you can have better health at any size, uh, but you can't oh, yeah. have good you can, health. See, at any size. I, here's where you, I could argue it. Right, you can be somebody a hundred pounds overweight, someone like this girl in the Cosmo, and be healthier than somebody who is super lean. So I do agree with that. Sure. If you're somebody who if that if just because you're skinny, right? And you, you know, run a lot. Like, well, you, how about running? There you go. You could be someone who's addicted to running. You undereat, so you're 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 malnutrition. You're, yeah, borderline you, anorexic. You do drugs. You have poor relationships with your your friends and family. I mean, that person is extremely unhealthy mm -hmm. compared to the person who's carrying 100 pounds of fat on their body. Yeah. And, and now that all being said, you know, here's the deal with with body fat. At some point, it doesn't matter how healthy you are. 
carrying that much extra weight is it's is, a stressor. It's it's a stressor on the body. First off, fat is a hormone sensitive tissue, so it will change how your body reacts and responds to hormones. It is inflammatory at a certain level, and you are carrying a lot of extra weight on your body. It's a that visible signal for unhealth, right? To right. be unhealthy, and I think that we've all like strayed away from that because of the fact that you know uh, it, psychologically. Yeah, it, it is better to, you know, in terms of like, okay, if I want to like love myself, like that's a very important quality to have, you know? And so I think that, you know, starting with that and, and, and owning that and, yeah. and, and wanting to work up, but now redefine that. Like, how do you really love yourself? Exactly. Now? Exactly. Cause let's, let's be clear here. If you're, you know, 80 pounds overweight, you're not really taking care of yourself in some way. Yeah. You're just not, I mean, the human body. Well, what you're doing is you're feeding an addiction that you're you're in denial that you have an addiction, and just yeah. because it's not drugs and it's food in this situation, it's different. That's right. And so if you're carrying if you're carrying yourself a hundred pounds overweight, there's you, a mental there's a there's you a mental are, you, dysfunction. You, there, you for are sure. you are addicted to food. Mm -hmm. I don't care how the fuck you draw it up. Like you are, you're addicted to food. You are eating way more than your way more energy than your body is burning off and needing in therefore access. you are addicted to it bottom line that's all there's no ifs ups and about it can you love yourself 100 pounds of weight absolutely and we talk about this all the time that full health isn't just physical health it's spiritual health it's mental health there's other aspects of health and so you can be in a very good mental place and be overweight like that person you can be you can love yourself and have good relations yeah. and and meditate and do a lot of other things but you're not addressing all of it right. and there is something in there that's out of balance and right. and and yes you are not and you're not as healthy as you can be. Yeah, I had this discussion a long time ago with uh, a family member who was, you know, she's 80 pounds overweight, and obviously I've been in, f in fitness for a long time. And we got into this little discussion about, you know, about body weight. And she's like, well, you know, genetically, this is just how, how heavy I am. And I said, well, I said, look, genetics definitely can play a role, but genetics don't account for 80 pounds overweight. It, it just doesn't well, work that way. There's also epigenetics. Yeah, well, there's that, but it just you, you're just eating too much and you're not moving, yeah. and you've done this for a long period of time. And, and the, the reason why you see families being overweight, like mom and dad are overweight, kids are overweight, grandparents are overweight, oh, it must be genetics. No, you also learn your eating habits and your lifestyle from the family around you. So it's less your genes that you can't control, more of your lifestyle. And if, like I said, if you go back 100 years – you know, it was far more rare to find people that were even just 50 pounds overweight. Mm -hmm. Now, why has that changed today? Well, people don't treat themselves the same way. Food is more available. It's more processed. We move less. People don't take care of themselves uh, in, in the same way, or at least there's different problems. So food becomes, a, like Adam was saying, a drug. And so it becomes much more common. But to be that big and to say, I really truly love myself and take care of myself, that's not true. But here's the thing too, and this is important because I feel for people in this situation, just like I feel for anybody in, in, a, in, a, in a bad situation with uh, a, something that is harming them, okay? Whether it be alcohol, drugs, sex, gambling, it could be food, it could be anything. I still have empathy for these people. But the thing in this particular situation is when you have an addiction to food, it's a very obvious outward, you know, visual representation. Like yeah. people, And people do judge you based on how you look. I mean, it might not be politically correct to say, but it's a fact of life. We create judgments on people based on the available information we have on them. So that includes, you know, when we look at them, that includes every conversation we've had with them, every phone conversation, text messages, how they behave with other people. We create this kind of persona. And when you appear to have like, you know, you're a hundred pounds overweight, people can consciously try not to make that judgment, but your brain's subconsciously making these shortcuts. And one of them is, this person has less self-control, this person may have an issue, and that their health uh, may not be ideal. And when and visual representations of health is what's known as aesthetics. It's what makes people more attractive. And you don't have to go extreme. I don't mean think you need to be shredded or anything like that. But when your visual representation says not, I, not as healthy, people tend to subconsciously treat you differently. And it's just a fact of life. And so this also becomes a problem. But I, I, I will say this, and I feel for people like this, separate your body image from your self-image. Mm -hmm. So you can definitely love yourself and accept yourself and care about yourself, but you can also separate that from your body and say to yourself, 
I haven't been treating my body very well. I need to do these things. Doesn't mean you hate yourself. No. I've, I've talked about this for a long time. I don't think you should motivate yourself to lose weight based on the hating yourself and finding yourself mm -hmm. disgusting or whatever. That is a, a path down more dysfunction. What are, what are, you, what are your guys' thoughts on the trainers and the dietitians who are embracing this? Irresponsible? Um, I think That's trainers- the wrong message. Weak? Yeah, is it weak? Are yeah. you weak because you can't you you don't you don't know how to speak to it, and so you just it better you're easier succumbing to, to like uh, cultural pressures, right? Like so, like the the state of the culture has changed to where we're just trying to embrace everybody wherever they are for every fucking idea that they have, you right. know. And there's no discretion with that. Now it's like, and I don't know. For me, I'd, like I have nothing but empathy. I have nothing but empathy for people that are trying to to, to better themselves. Right. And, and I think that's where my, my line sort of draws. Like I have to like, you know, discern like, okay, are, are they trying to improve themselves or like, is it the, but, or is the message just, you know, um, we're accepting this and like, you know, the, the exaggerated version of this, you know, is unhealthy. That's unhealthy. You know, I'm not accepting that as like. You're just being so, honest. Yeah. I, I'm just being honest. I think they need to just be on Look, I had lots of clients who, you know, came to me cause they want to lose Which weight and they didn't, and they didn't, they would train me for years. Five years, six years, seventy pounds overweight because they still they did not want to change the 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 main habits that caused them to be overweight. Now, is that did I hammer them about it? No, I was just but I was honest. When that conversation would come up, I'd be very honest with them. But I also knew that them coming to see me two or three days a week was and eating poorly was much better than them not seeing me and eating poorly. So mm -hmm. it wasn't like I was angry. They're still doing something and they're healthier because they're doing that something. But when the conversation would come up. We, I was very honest. I wouldn't berate them or hammer them. I would literally be honest with them and say, look, you're doing everything right in terms of exercise. We still need to work on your nutrition. Your health is improved because you've done these things. However, there's a certain, at some point, if you want to continue to improve your health or reduce your risk of long-term disease and in increase your, and improve your quality of life, at some point, this is something that we, we should tackle and I'm here for you when you're ready. And that was it. Yeah, I, I'm on both sides of it because I I think that you know to each their own. If you if you are okay with that, and you and you like if, if it doesn't bother you that you can't go on a Hawaii a hike in Maui, you know you just got you were supposed to go to Hawaii, right? And you're how fun is it? Yeah, I know you've done the 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 big trip where you hike up to go to the waterfall. You can't fit in any seat, right? You, on an airplane. So if if these things don't bother you enough to want to change for it, and you want to just accept where you're at, and you love food so much that you w are willing to stuff your say stuff your face so much that it may actually take years off your life, or actually less improve your your quality of your life with hiking and things that are physical you might if all that stuff doesn't matter to you then who am i then absolutely love yourself accept yourself where you're at but then you have to own those consequences too i mean there's mm -hmm. with, with everything that we do there is some sort of a consequence that right. comes with that and if you're okay with those consequences i'm okay with those consequences like that's so as a dietitian or a trainer speaking to somebody who's happy well i'm not trying to change you it's not yeah. my, my job isn't to change you my job is to help help you and so if help you help yourself and right. if that's where you want as to go as a professional then, in the field right. though if you're asking my person you know professional opinion you know i'm going to lead you towards more of a healthy practice right you know but not i'm not trying to judge you as far as like wh where you feel like you're most happy well it's like, like that's the, you that's you it's like how we talk about on drugs i mean I, I keep going back to the drug thing with food i think it's so it's so closely related i mean if somebody wants to get high every single day and it doesn't hurt me then by all means sure. fucking do it like it's sure. your it's your life yeah you know no what I'm I, I don't have i'm the same exactly where you are adam the 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 problem becomes when they make it everybody else's problem so what i mean by that is you're let's say you're you know you're 350 pounds and you go on a plane you don't fit in the seat right. that's the plane the airline at. says you have to buy two tickets you sue the airline for discrimination right no no it's not discrimination it's just <laughs> logistics no right. I'm, you I'm, chose to live that yeah, way yeah that's that's your or right. they sue a, a fast food company or they sue whatever or they want free health care to take yeah. care of their their health for decisions that they've made for them yeah all these things that's what really gets on my uh, that that's what pisses me off because yeah. It's your life, and I get it, and it's not a problem, and I'll always respect that, but it's not everybody else's life, so don't, right. don't force it on the other people. Don't impose it. Yeah, and what's happening with this, with this body acceptance thing, it, there's a lot of positives to it, but there can also be a negative spin where you know, you, have, you might have a lot of people who are like, oh, cool, I'm, I'm going to completely destroy my body and continue doing, you know, living this way because you know, I'm, I need to accept myself. There, there may be actually cases like that where people feel like that's the direction they need to go 
because they may be shunned, no joke, they may be shunned from saying things like, you know what, I really want to lose weight. No, don't do that. You know, you're great how you are, this and that. But yeah, and again, it's confusing body image with self image. You see what I'm saying? Because I think you sh- just because you're you're overweight doesn't mean you're a bad person. Just because you're you know whatever your health is an ideal doesn't mean you're a bad person. Should be treated like a bad person. But you do have a body that is not healthy. Separate the two because when we combine is when we tend to. Well, get that, that's I have a problem more with someone like Cosmo magazine putting it out there like that. So that's I have less of the. the They've been promoting poor health forever though. It's right. not just yeah every, on the other end of the spectrum. Yeah, like too. like come on, right. that's the, that's the part that got on my nerves. Like everybody's up in arms because they have an obese model, yeah. but they've been having these anorexic, you know, anorexic heroin, yeah. you know, <laughs> looking <laughs> girls forever. Yeah, it is. It's true. It, it is. Those look like you it, know, I and guess, and yeah. and they're promoting these incredibly insane body image ideals where these women are cartoonish. Yeah. Most women don't look like that, and so. You know what? You know they've. It's not like Cosmos ever promoted anything that's accurately healthy or good that's for good people point. to read. That is funny. They went from one extreme to the other extreme. Yeah, it's all been shitty. <laughs> and it's look at the end of the day, consumer is going to dictate what Cosmos is going to promote. So yeah. if if the consumers like it, then they'll buy it and they'll make more of it. If they don't, then they won't. And so anytime someone complains about that kind of stuff, I just say, look, don't buy it, and then see if they continue making it. But I right. guess enough people are doing it yeah. to make this the me- the message. Right. Next question is from Biafi Lee. Do the strength and muscle gains from creatine go away after you stop using it at the same dosage? Yeah, a lot of people ask this question because of That's the- That's kind of a hard one to answer, though. Well, I, you know what? This used to be a hard one to answer, but now we have literature to show you know what happens long-term with creatine. So the reason why people ask this question is when you first start taking creatine, if it agrees with your body, because there's a small percentage of people that- will take creatine and won't get anything from it or it'll upset their stomach. Mm-hmm. But if you're like 80 something percent of the population and you take creatine, you'll 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 feel fine from it. And what ends up happening is you in, creatine gets converted to the the uh, primary source of muscle or cellular energy um, known as ATP um, and especially for explosive type movements. It burns up very quickly but it burns very hot. And so this is the energy you use when you're sprinting or you're lifting heavy weights or anything that involves a lot power of power. movements, yeah. That increases in your muscles. Along with that comes more water because for every ATP molecule, I think another water, like a water molecule has to follow it or something like that. So when you take creatine initially, you gain weight right away. Yeah. For an average male who's maybe 160 to 170 pounds, expect three to five pounds on the scale. For the average female, that's probably one to three pounds. Now, it's not muscle necessarily. Mm, it's, water retention. It, but it's not it's not it's bloat. Not, yeah, bloat. But it, It's not bloat because bloat is water outside of the muscle. So right. think of a balloon and your muscle being a balloon. It fills up the balloon more. So your muscles feel bigger. They feel fuller. Doesn't take away definition. Doesn't make you so look your bloated. Your cells are more hydrated. Yeah. And so you're gaining this extra water and glycogen and all these other things in ATP within the muscle, and that's where you get these immediate, literally within, if you start taking creatine today, you can expect to gain some weight, intra, intramuscular weight within the first week or two. That's how fast it happens. Then if you stay on it for a month and then you go off of it, the three pounds you gained will be gone. And so people say, well, did I actually gain any muscle? Well, first off, uh, there's another piece to this I forgot to mention. You do get stronger right away as well for mm-hmm. more of that ATP. So you do get strength gains. But if you stop taking it after about a month, the strength gains tend to go away, and so does the weight. And so people think, oh, is, is creatine just this temporary thing? And the we didn't have evidence to, to, to prove one way or the other, but a lot of people thought and speculated, well, it may contribute to faster muscle growth, solid muscle growth, if you take it long term. And that was a speculation. Well, we do have studies now that show that that actually happens. If you take creatine, the initial gain is water, the initial strength gains are more ATP, but it does accelerate uh, and increase muscle protein synthesis, which is the building of muscle fibers. There's an indirect fat burning effect that happens from creatine as well, mm. probably because your muscles are operating at a, at a higher capacity. And so if you take it over the course of a year, and let's say due to the creatine you gain seven pounds, then you stop taking it, you might lose three pounds of the water, but you gained 
four pounds of muscle, which may be another yeah. two pounds over what you would have gained right, anyway. So it's yeah, a, net, it's a cogn- net win. Yeah. It's a net win. There's a cognitive boosting effect too. Yeah. So the cognitive boosting effects. I thought that's only if you're somebody who lacks the amount of creatine that you would need from like your normal diet. So like a vegan or something. Vegans like that. get the biggest uh, mm. cognitive boost from creatine be- just because they're not getting it. Because now your body can produce its own ATP from uh, from amino acids. But uh, creatine itself is found in animal tissue. So what I've always been interested in is if you're somebody who gets adequate amount of meat and beef, especially because that's where it's mostly found in, right? I think uh, I think I read somewhere a 12 or a 14 ounce steak has about three grams or so of creatine, yeah, g- I think give or it's take a pound or gra- a, a something pound. like that. It's I know it's in that range, like a give or take somewhere around there. So if you're somebody who is eating a pretty high, you know, red meat diet for the most part. I would think that you're getting enough pr- pr- uh, creatine in that it wouldn't make a big difference if you were supplementing. Or is it in, on top of that still that will give you a boost? You, you know, you're more you're likely to get a boost. So two pounds of beef will give you uh, five grams uh, of creatine. Okay, so that's a lot of meat, right? That is. Yeah. It it most people gain a benefit from taking creatine because our our muscles' capacity to store ATP is usually not tapped out, even if you eat a decent amount of meat. Really, the only way to know. Is to supplement from it and see if you get a benefit, really. Yeah. But I think most people in the studies show it's the most consistent, you know, gains producing supplement out there, hands down, bar none. There right. is no supplement that with comes the close. least amount of side effects that you would see. Oh, right? I mean, that's another, that's a whole nother conversation. Just in gains, there isn't a single non hormonal, so like obviously steroids will, 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 will beat creatine, but there isn't a single muscle building supplement that is even in the same universe as creatine in terms of gains of strength and muscle. Not even mm. close. You can take all the amino acids and exotic, you know, supplements and protein powders that you can you want. None of them are going to produce the immediate and, and pretty much consistent guaranteed types of strength and muscle gains that you will from creatine. Now from a from a safety standpoint, so far extremely safe. Uh, unless you have some kind of renal, you know, disease or, or kidney type issues. Um, there's, there seems to be no issues whatsoever. It's now, it, there's even science now showing that creatine is an antioxidant for the body, good for the heart. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's good for the brain in terms of longevity. So now they're finding that people who supplement with creatine long-term have lower rates of, uh, things like dementia and Alzheimer's. In fact, there's now, mm. uh, some doctors that are suggesting that maybe people with those conditions should supplement, uh, with, uh, with creatine. Interesting. So it's becoming this like awesome supplement that most people should take you know mm. uh, just to benefit their like health overall even. health not just a performance driven uh, muscle building yeah supplement. it's becoming yeah. like a health supplement that people should should take i personally have been taking creatine almost nonstop <laughs> since <laughs> i was 16 well i stopped for quite a, a while i mean that was my first supplement that really worked you know that i tried yeah. that, that with like whey protein but um, I, then I, I eliminated it cause once I reintroduced it, I got a little bit of stomach ache, but I mean, it really worked for me for quite, quite a while, but I haven't used it in years. You guys remember the first time you took creatine? Yeah. yeah. Oh man. First time for me, I bought, um, EAS made phosphagain, yeah. which was a, it was a protein powder with creatine in it. Oh, yeah. so it was mixed in already. Yeah. Cause then they had phosphagen, which is just the and creatine. And they had phosphagen HP. Yeah. Which yeah. was with the sugar. That's right. <laughs> yeah. And I, I remember, I, I, remember all I would weigh myself all the time, right? See how much weight I've gained, see how much weight I've gained. And if I get, and I used to have to stuff my face to even gain a half a pound. Yeah. And I remember taking phosphagen. I'll do cell tech, I think. Is that's, yeah. yeah. That's I was taking I phosphagen and I remember my, all my lifts went up five to 10 pounds within yeah. like a week and a half. Yeah. And I gained five pounds on the scale. That and blew my me mind. out. Yeah. Blew my mind, and the pumps were insane, and all that stuff, and yeah. I never yeah, really stopped. Works. Yeah, it does, and it's it's uh, it's pretty inexpensive. I guess your biggest risk with creatine is if it's not from a good source, because there's there's definitely been independent. You know what I want to do, As, and I actually why we were talking, I put put a note right now because I've been trying to get on a call with Organifi to talk to them about some other stuff, but I just put this on this. We should make them make creatine, and we should label it under us. <laughs> we talk wow. enough positive stuff about it. That's we don't. A, that's we, a brilliant idea. We don't have a a reliable, just purely creatine source. We have no desire to get into the supplement game with all like the other 
performance bullshit supplements that are out there. Right. And it's hard. Well, to, we've always talked highly about creatine specifically. Well, and it's that's hard, it. It's hard because most people that sell creatine, they also sell all the other eight things that are popular right now. Well, sucralose is mixed in there. Yeah, and right. So I'm like, you know, what would be cool is if I can convince Organifi that there's there's enough of a market, especially them because they have a vegan protein too. So I would think it would be a great compliment to their business model already. <laughs> yeah. I'm going I'm to work on that for us. It's, yeah. it's the one. I'm going to put some pressure on them. It's the right, one supplement happens. I recommend them feel heat. To, to most people. But if you're a vegan, if I ever trained you and you were a vegan, we had a nice, we would have nice conversations on that because I would really try and get. And whenever my vegan clients would take creatine, that was like night and day, man. Night and day difference. Well, is there a them. reserve for them to take it? Because is it animal derived? It's it all. Oh, that's a good question. That's a very, very good question, Justin. I don't know. Hmm. Maybe some vegans don't want to take creatine because it's. It's it's from animal sources. I know, like some of them are very like you know like dogmatic about like where the source comes from. Wow, you know, that's a great. So I, I have know. no idea. Yeah. I don't mm-hmm. know. I'll find out. Okay. Next up is more JoJo. What do you mean when you say a gym has a good culture or vibe? What should fitness managers and personal trainers do to create a good culture? So funny. This is a question that you picked, Sal, because I was at. Um, and I'm going to shout out these guys. I wish I remember exactly their address so I could give them some real love. But we went to, we drove into uh, Salinas, which is like, you know, bumfuck Egypt, uh, <laughs> to go work out because I was like the closest. Like I wanted to go to like a good sized gym. I didn't want. To, I can't. I can't do the hotel gym like Sal can do. And so I told Katrina, I'm like, let's go find like a really good, uh, you know, Golds or something. And we found Golds and we went there. And I and I the the owner the GM wasn't the owner the GM was in there and there was about four or five trainers working there and just from the moment we walked in the facility to the moment we left I even made sure I complimented him on the way out and said and I did a post and just you know said great vibes here and the culture is just really nice and what you could tell is everything from the front desk to the management to the staff the trainers that work there to the people on the floor and you could I can feel this because I've been in this industry for so long. I can feel a good culture and a good vibe the moment I walk in, as I can right away. Fe- yep. as I can feel a bad one. Mm-hmm. And you know, it's like uh, what you talk about and when you when you think. When, so, what we mean by culture or vibe like that? First of all, like it, it all starts from leadership, right? So, from the top down, like when people have bad experience, things it's it's we used to have this saying: "There's no such thing as bad clubs, only bad managers." And it's so true that if you've got a guy or a girl at the top who is an incredible leader that is selfless that puts a staff or her staff above themselves, that cares about their club, they take ownership of it, they take they keep it clean, they talk to their members, they care about what their members think. You can fucking feel that. Mm-hmm. You can feel it as soon as you walk in. Yeah, it trickles down. It does. And it's it's the way people interact. The front desk interacts with me. It's the way the staff comes by and interacts with me. It's the way the members interact with each other. There's this 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 beautiful mutual respect and that and it takes time to build a culture like you can't just walk in a gym as a you know as a manager and all of a sudden just expect that like oh i'm going to change this culture like it takes time to change culture Mm -hmm. it takes time to change the vibe and it really starts with the leader the person who's running the facility and it does it trickles down to the rest of them and it's it's i I would say to, to simplify and kind of and there's a lot that goes into this so this is not a simple easy thing like adam's saying but to simplify what creates a good culture or vibe if the staff enjoys working and being there and if the staff cares about the business or the club, if you have that, if the team that works there all enjoy working with with each other and enjoy working there and actually care about the business, you will have, typically you'll have a great culture and a great vibe. And you know this in any business. How many times have you gone to a restaurant yeah. and you walk in and the people there don't seem to like their job. Mm-hmm. They don't seem to like to work there or they don't like each other. You can feel it. it feels sterile or feels dry or sometimes it feels negative. On the flip side, if you've ever gone to a restaurant where the owner comes out and introduces himself, the waiters smile. You can see the waiters talking to each other, having a great time. People are, you can tell they genuinely want to work there. It creates a, a, a far different vibe. Well, that's much more powerful in a gym. Remember, a gym is something that you visit on a hopefully on a consistent regular basis so it's not like a restaurant in the sense that most people don't go to the same restaurant every week some people do but most of the time you don't right with a gym you're going there if you're consistent between two to four days a week every single week 
you're going to pick up on whether or not the the the, the staff wants to be there. You're going to pick up on the drama between the staff. You're going to pick up on whether or not the staff actually gives a shit mm-hmm. about the business. Like, you know, one of my telltale signs with my teams when I would run gyms is if they walked by a piece of trash right, on the floor, right. did they just naturally pick it up? That would tell me right there, like, they value the facility. They value what we're doing here. They're, they're all want to work here as part of a team. But that starts, again, with the leader. Totally. The one that, who's implementing that, right? Who's teaching them all to care about this place as if it's there. Because that's as a manager, that it's a challenging situation to hire somebody who's making minimum wage or even a, a, a trainer who's making an hourly or a commission base off of a client who's there mm-hmm. to get them to think of the club as theirs. theirs. And that, I used to always teach my trainers that like you guys are in such a cool, even though you work for this company, you really work for yourself and this is your gym. Like this is your gym. And I mean, we all share it together, but it's really yours. And to, to create that ownership in each one of your, your staff members is so important because if you can get them to treat it as if it is mm-hmm. theirs, like Sal was saying, then somebody who's not res- – like you, we, we, had a, we had porters. We had people that were hired to clean the bathrooms. So it isn't my trainer's job or my front desk's job to go pick up a piece of paper or toilet paper that's on the bathroom floor. It's not their job. But when they when they care about the place mm-hmm. and they want to make it nice and they want the experience of the members to be good because they now have taken ownership of it they do those little things and it's amazing when you when you have done a good job as a leader to have implemented that type of a culture mm-hmm. in the entire facility it bleeds into your members and then you have members that do that shit yes. then all of a sudden then all of a sudden the the member you know, picking up shit. I love, yeah, I love watching like a good place where you, where you go where the members literally like regulate each other, right? So, like, I know some sometimes I'll be in a culture where it's like, you know, you, you get some of the gorillas in the back and they're very like aggressive and like you know, like they're not very inviting. Like it's like very intimidating uh, to where you'll see that same type of like huge, you know, unapproachable guy that's like super friendly, you know, talking to everybody, helping everybody out. Like everybody's racking weights together, but they're all like checking somebody that 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 comes in with this like ego, this attitude like right away. Oh, there's well, some gyms you can go into and if you don't rack your weights, the members well, you don't even the staff. Like the members he, just go out. The members yeah. come tell, "Hey, man, it. can you would yeah. you mind putting right, yourself? right?" Yeah. So I, it's funny we're here too because this is it's literally this happened to me and I had this moment. So I was at um, this is two two days ago. We come back and we went to uh, OCK, which is one of my favorite restaurants in San Jose. It's over in the Campbell area. It's fucking amazing. It's farm to farm to plate. Uh, the vibe is dope inside there. The food is amazing. The environment's sick. The bathroom is always spotless and clean and smells good. I, I love that for me when I go to a restaurant and the restroom smells like good. Like I'm like that's fucking rad because you're yeah. in a place of eating and then to have a restroom that stinks is just gross they're to me. Actually eating here. Yeah. So the the vibe is like and this is a regular place. I'm on there all the time. So I'm in there this weekend. I go to the bathroom. I'm washing my hands and I, I dry it off and I go to throw in the thing and one of the towels, the paper towel missed the trash. And I actually turned to walk away. Like it, like it just, it just kind of missed it. And it was kind of in this like hard corner to go get after, after I threw it that way and it missed. And I stopped in my tracks and I caught myself and I went over and I reached down to pick it up and I threw it in the trash. And, you know, if, and I have to admit being completely honest, if it was a place that I probably didn't give two shits about, I would have just walked out. I would have I would have just said ah fuck I missed the trash but who yeah. cares there's fucking graffiti on the wall yeah. there's shit on the floor right yeah. here the staff People is pissing on the yeah, walls you know, or whatever yeah no one gives a fuck anyways like there's already a mess in here no one's taking care of it. but because the place was so clean and taken care of that I was the first one to potentially put a blemish on the bathroom it, it, I felt compelled to turn back around and grab it and throw it in the trash dude this reminds mm-hmm. me of a, I just totally I completely forgot about the story and it just all reminds me of you know years ago. I remember when I would when I was managing gyms for 24, my VP came in and you know we'd hang out sometimes and talk about business whatever, and he said, you know what's strange? He told me he says, you know what's weird, Sal? He goes, when you walk into a club, you know you guys increase your sales and leads and blah 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 stuff that I knew about. But he also said, what's weird is the the loss actually goes down significantly every time you walk into a club. Now the loss, for people who don't know what that means, is this is like theft. Okay, so if you have supplements and apparel um, in a gym, you always account for a certain percentage of it to just go missing. It's just the fucking fact of life. Very sad. 
but it's true. And this is true for any retail business. And right. they they put a lot of things in place to try to stop that and whatever. Yeah, LP. But it just happens, right? And so with with these gyms, there was this consistent number that they would have for a club that okay, this is going to be this will be always three three thousand dollars worth of loss or whatever. And he's like, you know, it's weird. So he goes, every time you walk in these clubs, you guys produce more of this and that. And he goes, but then what's weird is after a month or two, the loss starts to go down and then you guys are almost losing nothing. And he goes, what are you doing to stop the theft? And so I think he thought that I was keeping an eye on people. regulations and, out there. Yeah, yeah. Or, you know, and I said, well, well, nothing. I'm not doing anything. I'm just, I didn't even, I'm not even focusing on that. It's not even something I've ever thought about, to be honest with you. And I mean, I thought about it a little bit, but only if it got out of hand or, if it, but that never happened, right? So I never thought of it. And then I thought about this for a while after he told me that. I was like, that's weird. He says it's happened consistently with every club that I've ever gone into. And then I thought, I thought back to myself when I was a kid, and I've only, I'm, I've, I've, I've only ever stole something once when I was a kid. I went inside of a, a, a craft store, and I stole a bunch of beads. This is back when you used to wear those stupid parkas that we wear. I had a 49er parka, and we put beads <laughs> on the. Remember, you put beads on the on the hood strings or whatever. And I stole a bag of beads from the store, and I felt a little guilty. But you know why I didn't feel super guilty? Because I don't know who I was stealing from. It was Michael's. It's this fucking nameless corporation. It's this big place. Nobody really cares, right? Nobody cares or whatever. And so I think the reason why my gyms had would the, the amount of theft or whatever would go down isn't because people stopped wanting to steal. It's because they don't want to steal from me. Mm-hmm. See what I'm saying? Right. Because it was, oh, you know what? I don't want to – this is Sal, like Sal's gym and, you know, we, and we all work together and we're a team. It's very, very different versus when you just show up, punch in, and punch out, mm-hmm. and it's this huge organization called 24 Hour Fitness. Yeah, that's Globo Gym. Yeah, nobody cares if I take a protein powder, or I yeah. take a bar, or I right. take a shirt. Right. Nobody gives a shit. And so that's another way to see the culture is, you know, can you leave your, 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 your stuff unlocked, and does it still go missing? Can you leave the supplements out? Right. Can you trust people with the facility and to watch how they take care of it? It's pretty, it's pretty fucking awesome. And you can feel that culture as a customer. Mm-hmm. When you walk, here's the deal, okay? CrossFit has proven this, by the way. CrossFit's proven this. You want to be a successful gym? It's all about the culture. Because CrossFit boxes, especially when they first started, they didn't have a lot of fucking equipment. They had racks and barbells. They weren't nice. They were all in warehouses. Many of them were not air conditioned. Right. But it was the culture that was developed in the facility because they were small. And especially initially, there was a lot of passion behind it. People showed up, worked out, and they became... And they exploded. And gyms need to understand this. And if you want to have a successful gym, that is the key right there. You create a good culture, your sales, everything will do just fine. Even if you don't know the intricacies of sales and promotion, all stuff, you'll do much better just from having a, a good culture. All right. Next question is from Ryan Alduenda. If you had to guess each other's childhood TV crush, <laughs> who do you what? think it would be? And after guessing... Who was your actual childhood TV so crush? So we, we have to crush each other. We have to crush. We have to. We have to guess each other's TV crush. Oh yeah. So like, that's weird. For, yeah. From I like, think we like an old same. sitcom, right? So there was there was a few like notable sitcoms back in the day that uh, I'm sure everybody watched. I like, think just throwing pain. I'm pretty or, sure Justin wanted to fuck. Punky Brewster. Oh my God, bro! I was gonna Ew. say that. No, <laughs> no, yeah. I was gonna say that. She wasn't like no. She was like a tomboy. Dude. You didn't like Punky Brewster? No. No. Did you really think? If on. anything, it would have been more of that like Android chick. Oh my you know? God, I was going to say that, dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was going to say that, uh, Small Wonder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that yeah, the one that yeah, touches yeah, her fingers wonder. together? No, no, no. no, no. no. She, she was like a robot that? that would like lift her brother and like chuck things. Yeah, and, their dad is like the scientist and created this this android that's like, you know, and, and she yeah. was this cute little girl and- Wow, no, you're thinking of, uh, fuck, what's the one he's what thinking it? of? Yeah, what's this one? That Her name was Evie. Oh, she would touch her fingers Eve. and freeze time. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Would you like to swing on a star? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. What, was that called? Beams, oh, uh, what was that fuck. called? What was that called? I don't remember the name. Out of, of this world. Out of this yeah, world? It was. Yeah. Wow, great job yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good good job there. Damn. Damn. That was good. Yeah. So you like the you like the girl from Some I like Kelly Kapowski. Of course, bro. Come on, of she course. was Saved me by the Bell. Fox. Oh, yeah. Saved by the Bell. Saved by the Bell. Fox. Saved by. The, yeah. I, I think Adams was uh, uh, Carmen Electra. 
That's what, I mean, I did like, I had a uh, Carmen Electra poster. Yeah. If Kathy I, Ireland? Britney Spears, dude. I had a huge Britney Spears yeah, crush. Yeah, we, uh, we know that. I already. had a Britney huge Spears. Britney Spears crush. Like massive. Yeah, yeah. massive. Like I, to the point where I think back now that, oh, wow, that's a little inappropriate. I'm 20 years old. What about like, who's I the boss? Like, I, th- I think Sal's was who's the boss with what's her name? Oh, um, yeah. Alyssa Milano. Alyssa or, Milano. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Right? I lo- oh, yeah. I thought she yeah. was. I and I thought Tony too. Danza was fucking awesome. Like, <laughs> the Tony you Danza mullet? Yeah. Oh, my God. That guy was yeah. the That's shit. a good call right there. Yeah. I could just see you just loving that show. Oh, all. I loved right? her. I did, and I did like Punky Brewster. You named Punky Brewster. That was my crush. Oh, uh, was it really? For, yeah, dude. And you know what happened? She was she so. She looked like tomboy. She was so cute. I mean, I was a kid. You know well, what yeah. I mean? I so I was a kids. young little kid. You probably attracted the fact that she would probably play cars and trucks and shit with you. Yeah. Oh, she's cool. Oh, no. I had a very vivid imagination, even as a young child. Oh, my God. God, yeah. you're sick. I Fuck. Was, I was terrible. <laughs> I was terrible. But remember, so the actress that played uh, Punky Brewster, Soleil Moon Fry, that was her name. So yeah. you, obviously her parents were hippies. Oh. But do you remember when all of a sudden she grew massive boobs? Mass- okay, uh, there's another one to that list. Uh, do you, you remember Full House? So remember, uh, it wasn't DJ. It was her sister. You don't like Kirk Cameron's sister? <sighs> that was Kirk, Kirk Cameron's Cameron sister was DJ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I'm you like talking, the ugly friend? Listen, no, 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 no. <laughs> it was the sister with the blonde hair. She ended up, I, I saw her on uh, Fuse TV and she was like a host of it or whatever, but she like blossomed. Did she really? Like, wh- I was like, whoa, oh, look shit. at you. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I just remembered. Shout out to whatever her I just name remember was. Punky Brewster all of a sudden getting mass, because her boobs got, I don't know if you guys do this. Yeah. They got so big, she had to get a reduction. Yeah. Which is, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. She had to get a breast reduction surgery. But here I am going through puberty with the show because I'm young, right? Like, and oh now God. her boobs are growing and I'm like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> this got better. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I was a huge- What's yeah. happening? Yeah, yeah, no, no. That's yeah. that's crazy. But you, uh, what about the show Blossom? Would you guys- She's kind of weird, right? But she was a little- Blossom? Remember? No, she was a little- No, yeah, you don't think so? Yeah, yeah. She's a little out there. Yeah. Okay. What about if you watch the cartoon Scooby-Doo? Yeah. Were you more? Which did you like? I the, know, you're the freak. You like you like the the, the, the glasses. Velma. 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 Uh, <laughs> come on, man. Really? Yeah, dude. God, you're a freak. Isn't that weird? Yeah, yeah I, could, I like. Velma. I, I couldn't jerk off to a cartoon. No, no, I like. No, the I never jerked off to a cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I won't say never. But yeah, to that cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't believe that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm sure. I call bullshit. I'm come sure. on, dude. Jessica Rabbit. You didn't jerk off to her. Come on. <laughs> I guarantee. <laughs> I, I guarantee. I, everybody had it. Yeah. Everybody has. I believe I tried. Yeah, I believe I tried. Bro, I, I believe that's I before tried. porn was readily available. That's what people understand. Like, why would you jerk off to that? There wasn't much. Yeah, there wasn't a lot. That's you got why. to get creative. Yeah, no. I, I bet you right now you could look up porn with freaking Velma, Sha- uh, Shaggy, and, and Scooby. I'm pretty yeah. sure. Oh yeah, you yeah, could yeah, find yeah. A, a, yeah. a weird. Doug was jerking thing. off to I Dream a Genie, right? That's oh, it. Yeah, that's yeah, it. Yeah. Uh, when they first started showing the belly button yeah. and stuff. Oh, so that was a big yeah. deal. Belly button beads. Right, yeah. and I Love Lucy. Oh, <laughs> I saw some ankle. <laughs> yeah. No, man. Oh. No, what about Daisy Dukes from Deuce to Hazard? Oh, oh. oh yeah. that, <laughs> <laughs> that brings me right back. The octaves dropped. Yeah. You guys, oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. That was Daisy fantastic. Dukes was a, she was a, that was a. Um, I can't believe you picked this question. Yeah, Daisy that was Duke. a good one. Or you yeah. had the, the what were they called? The Angels? Charlie's Angels? Mm-hmm. They were all Farrah freaking Fawcett smoking. Or yeah. What about Three's Company? Who, who was your girl on Three's oh, Company? Oh, I did the blonde, 100%. You like Chrissy? Yes. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You liked her better She's than Janet, great. huh? Oh, yeah, I was, I was a Janet guy. I didn't watch yeah. enough of Three's yeah. Company. You didn't? No, not a lot. It came on It came on after or before a show I really liked. I can't remember which what, what it was before or after that. Mm. Like a Mr. Belvedere or something like that. Was like, oh, my like, God. Because yeah. then she she came out with, with the thigh master, uh, Suzanne Summers, right? Yeah, and yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, and, and her, it was like her whole like onesie like spandex thing. And I was just like this kid, just like, yeah. whoa. Yeah. yeah. The, on, the, Enamored. The girls that I actually owned like pictures and calendars of because you know I, I i actually did have and i didn't put them up on my wall because i was i thought my would be weird but i did own the calendars and they were here's the three like calendars that i that's have. not a thing anymore huh no, no yeah. you gotta go online why yeah. would you own no, a physical, nobody has like a poster of like you know a girl on the wall girl. yeah no that was like, back in the day that. i had three someone should bring that back i think that's cool. i know right yeah. Yeah. if i was a teenage boy i so would do that stuff. bro i in my yeah. you know it's funny imagine like what my parents, tropics you know yeah, like yeah, there was yeah. like i had all those in imagine my what my parents thought i had one small calendar of the on the wall of kathy ireland and then i had pictures of like arnold luferino <laughs> so Crocker, conflicted yeah, all these, you're all like, these, you're all like don't look left oh i look left oh god i got fish 
<laughs> this weird, freak. weird yeah. guilt afterwards. Right. What, if I, <laughs> what if I done? I'm such a fan. Oh, I'm sorry, Arnold. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. you have to, he's all Conan. Just <laughs> you, have, you have to put like a sheet over them when you're yeah. doing it. You can't watch this. Yeah, exactly. No, I had I had Kathy Ireland. Then I had uh, what was her name? Fuck, Debbie Gibson. Remember Debbie Gibson? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then I had um, God. Who is the redhead girl that used to sing in the malls all the time? Tiffany. Tiffany. Mm-hmm. Those are the three. The three so calendar posters. I'm embarrassed to admit that I had like that Madonna. I had video. a whole room of like posters of Britney. Even I had like a framed eight by ten picture. Wow. Of her. Hold on a second. Yeah. We got We got to make sure we go back like in time. On the schoolgirl outfit. You were not 15. Years I know. Old when this I know. That's why it's embarrassing. You were 20. Well, I was, I was like say. I was like 18, 18 to 20, somewhere in that range. Let's, I'm gonna figure this yeah, out. Yeah, do like, the math. That was yeah, like TRL, I'm, like Total Request Live. Yeah. Let me see. Let me see. Carson what was her Daly. first? What was her first uh, well, album called? Remember this fucking school? The little flannel thing. Yeah, yeah that what, what yeah, was that? a little plaid skirt. Man. That was it was game over for Let's me. Let's see. Let me. I'm gonna look up the date. Yeah. So her first album was uh, was a baby one more time. Yeah. It was baby. How old are you, Adam? I'm 37. Okay, so 1999. Mm-hmm. So that's that's almost that's that's I'm a senior in high school. Yeah. That was my senior year. Yeah, high so you're like 18 so years 18, old. Yeah, that's yeah. what I said. So I graduated at 17. I graduated wow. high school at 17. Fuck, so you were that's an adult? at the peak of your. That's why I said I'm a little embarrassed yeah. about it, bro. Come you on, had posters in your room. Yeah, dude, wow. I did. Wow. That's great. <laughs> I, I I think I remember having it for like the first year I worked at 24 Hour Fitness too, and I thought, okay, wait a second, I have like a legitimate job. I make good money. Like, <laughs> I want to get posters. <laughs> yeah, I can't. You, did you think in your mind the like I'm going to meet her one day and totally. Uh, no, oh, you wow. didn't. So you know, I th- I think uh, I think I didn't like <laughs> you're, such a, you're like and, putting it out there. And you have the so much, yeah, exactly. I have that kind of confidence. And you know, Adam yeah, has yeah, so yeah. much <laughs> self belief. Yeah, uh, yeah, he's like, I'm gonna make this happen. I'm, I'm gonna marry this. to Britney Spears. Yeah. I, to the point too where I didn't like Justin Timberlake just because he was with her, right? So right. Like, I I was anti him for so long, and then that what sealed that for me was when he did Dick in a Box. Then I was like, okay, this dude's cool. Yeah. But up to that point, I didn't like. And him. He lost the like, fuck that guy. Like fuck that frosty guy. tip perm. Get in the way of yeah. Wow. Who's yeah. that other girl that was right along that line? Like you had Britney Spears and there was that other Christina girl. Christina Aguilar. Christina yeah. Aguilar. No, no. There was uh, the other one. She, I know her. But then there was the other one who did. She was Daisy Duke in the new remake of uh, Oh, yeah. Dick's Jessica Adam. Simpson. That. She was I think she trumps gorgeous Britney all day long. She, she's gorgeous. I think she shits yeah. on her yeah. all day long. Yeah. 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 I saw that video. Yeah. I watched it. <laughs> <laughs> That's horrible. That's yeah. gross. Sorry. Hey, check this out. We have a, a new guide that is out uh, for <coughs> developing muscular arms. So it's a free guide, totally free. It's all about building and training your arms and the myths associated with that training and how you should train to maximize your progress with your arm training. You can find it at Mind Pump Free. Dot com. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now, plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.